open your book to the z-score table on page 571 and take a moment to look down two columns simultaneously. The z-score column, column A, and the tail column, column C. Notice that as the z-scores get larger, the values in the tail column get smaller. Put another way, the larger the z-score value that you may compute with the z-score formula, the lower the probability of that score occurring or the proportion of scores in that area will be smaller, or the percentage of scores that far out in the tail will be smaller. We will be designating certain proportion values as alpha levels. The extremely unlikely values, as defined by the alpha level, make up what is called the critical region. These extreme values in the tails of the distribution define outcomes that are inconsistent with the null hypothesis. That is, they are very unlikely to occur if the null hypothesis is true. Technically, the critical region is defined by sample outcomes that are very unlikely to occur if the treatment has no effect. That is, if the null hypothesis is true. Reversing the point of view, we can also define the critical region as sample values that provide convincing evidence that the treatment really does have an effect. This is figure 8.4, which is on page 210 in your text, and it shows the bell curve with the boundary to the critical region, very unlikely outcomes, for alpha equals 0 0.05. Researchers have established alpha levels that relate to how confident they want to be that the results from the test they conducted can be attributed to the treatment rather than to error or chance. For an alpha of 0.05, what that means is that a researcher is 95% sure that the results of the test statistic came from the treatment and that there is only a 5% risk of error or chance. An alpha of 0.01 means that a researcher is 99% sure of the results and that there is only a 1% risk that error or chance caused the outcome. To determine the exact location for the boundaries that define the critical region, we will use the alpha level probability and the unit normal table. In most cases, the distribution of sample means is normal, and the unit normal table will provide the precise z-score location for the critical region boundaries. With an alpha equals 0.05, for example, the boundaries separate the extreme 5% from the middle 95%. For a null hypothesis, we split that 5% equally between the two tails of the distribution so that there is exactly 2.5% or 0 0.0250 in each tail. In the unit normal table, you can look up a proportion of 0 0.0250 in column C, the tail, and find that the z-score boundary is z equals 1.96. Thus, for any normal distribution, the extreme 5% is in the tails of the distribution beyond z equals 1.96 and z equals negative 1.96. These values define the boundaries of the critical region for a hypothesis test using alpha equals 0 0.05. Let's take a moment and identify how to find all the other alpha levels you'll be working with. This figure 8.5 is on page 216 in your book and shows the locations of the critical region boundaries for three different levels of significance. Alpha equals 0 0.05, alpha equals 0 0.01, and alpha equals 0 0.001. The alpha levels on this slide are all for two-tailed tests based on a null hypothesis so the risk of error or chance is divided equally into both tails. Take your calculator and divide 0 0.01 by 2. The answer you should get is 0 0.005. Now go to the z-score table in your book and look down the tail column until you get to the value closest to 0 0.005. When you get to that location, you find a bit of a dilemma. One value is 0 0.0049, and the other value is 0 0.0051.
So which do you choose? For this decision, and for all decisions where you have the same dilemma, the correct decision is to choose the value associated with the larger z-score. The two possible selections are z equals 2.57 and z equals 2.58. If you map those two z-scores out on the horizontal axis, you would see that z equals 2.58 is one point further out into the tail. You would select z equals 2.58 because, because it is the more conservative choice, being the boundary to the critical region that is a little further out into the tail. For the last alpha, 0 0.001, go through the same process we did so that you can find the z value that forms the boundary to the critical region on your own.